Well, good morning, everybody. It's a little after 6 a.m. here in the Washita's. You're able to see right behind me is uh, Lake Washita. We're down in the Washita region today for a very special reason. We are going to go do some searching today for Joshua Kasky. Uh, he went missing back in January, January 17th. He left Iowa uh, for no known reason and was last positively seen for sure in Mena, Arkansas, which is not too terribly far from where I'm at right now. And then there was another sighting on January 31st on the Eagle Rock Loop hiking trail in the Washita National Forest, which is also not too far from where I'm at right now. And he spoke to someone on the trail, at least it sounds very likely. And that was back on January 31st of 2024. It is now May 16th, 2024 and there's been no no confirmed sightings no activity on credit cards debit cards that kind of thing his car has not been spotted and uh, he's just vanished and we don't know where and uh, I heard about it a while back and you know, most of the time when a, say a hiker goes missing in Arkansas they usually get found pretty quick and and what I've seen over the last several years, uh, but he's not been found. We don't know where he's at. Nobody knows where he's at or, and hasn't heard anything. Sorry, the bugs are, gnats are out a little bit. But today I reached out to the family um, and I was like, hey, how can, can we help? And so we're here today and we need your help because we don't know where Joshua's at. He could be here in the Washita somewhere, still hiking a trail, uh, clearing his head. Um, he's not in any kind of trouble with family or law enforcement, anything like that. So the reason for him disappearing is really unknown. The, the family just does not know what's going on or why. And they just want him to, they want to see him again. They want him to, they, they, you know, the hope is that he just shows up and is like, hey, I just need to clear my head for a little while. Um, but we, we just obviously don't know. So there's a lot of unknowns. And today, uh, we're going to start trying to cover some of this area around where he was last seen um, in case he's camping out somewhere, uh, you know, just clearing his head or, or anything like that. There's so many possibilities in the wintertime. Um, these mountains on these back roads and the dirt roads, if you don't know the area or maybe you don't have the best mapping system, it'd be very easy to get lost, stuck, turned around. Um, accidents can happen. So there's just we don't know. So the goal is to go through and systematically work through a lot of these forest service roads in the national forest and uh, check off. We just go to camping areas, um, you know, to look anywhere we can, mark potential spots that maybe need further investigation, and just do what we can to eliminate areas where he could be at and just see uh, if we can find anything. But because we don't know, we need your help because he could be anywhere. He could be six states over. Um, he came here from Iowa, which doesn't make a lot of sense. But you know, people sometimes gravitate to Arkansas to go hike and because there's so many things like that here. So we don't know why he came here. We don't know where he's at. So I'm gonna put some information in the description where you can go check out. Um, I learned a lot through the podcast that The Vanished put out. I'll put a link to that and, uh, and I'll put some more information. There's a Facebook group um, where they're sharing information about possible sightings and different things like that. Um, so I'll put that information in the description so that you can go, you know, just keep an eye out. Go look at, it's a green Ford Taurus, I believe a 2013. Uh, you know, go look at that vehicle with that license plate. If you're wheeling in the Ozarks, overlanding, side, riding side by sides, that kind of thing, uh, just go look at the information and get it in your head in case you run across something while you're out wheeling somewhere. That's kind of part of our goal is to get this information to you so you can help us. The more eyes that are on it, the more likely he, he's found. Or somebody can say, hey, your family's looking for you. They love you. Uh, please reach out. You know, some, if he's out there, let's help bring him home. So uh, Luke and Tim are going to meet up with me here in a little bit. Uh, I'm staying down in this area for a few days, and me and my wife are going to do some more searching. The, uh, the guys can't be down for too long, but they're going to be down today. 
we're going to just go start. We're going to be tracking our routes so that we're, you know, using our time as efficiently as possible and just working through some of this area. So I'm going to get in the truck and get on the road and we're going to start seeing what we can find and doing the best we can. So thank you for watching. Uh, share this with somebody because it's, it's not about what we're doing here. It's about Joshua and his family and he's out here somewhere we don't know where but he's out here somewhere so let's let's help find him i stopped off here at the bluebell cafe they do shuttling for the washita trail and i knew the family had been in contact with them about some potential sightings in the area but they they still haven't seen anything um, so i'm going to keep going on down and getting closer to the area where we're actually going to get on the dirt roads and and check out what's down there so I just went through another little community, the community of Mount Ida, and so now I'm going to start checking out some of the dirt roads, the Forest Service roads around here. That's going to be our focus is the Forest Service roads, um, and uh, Tim and Luke are probably an hour, hour and a half behind me, so I'm going to try to hit some of these that are close to Mount Ida while I'm waiting on them, and then we'll meet up and head a little bit further south. Uh, Mount Ida is kind of due east of Mina, which would have been the last known location. Uh, it's east of Mina and northeast of the of the Eagle Rock Loop area. So we're going to start here and then work our way down towards the Eagle Rock Loop today and just cover as much ground as possible. the Washita's and the Ozarks there's cool little places to stop and camp things like this and tons of little camp spots and pull-offs everywhere there's there's so many places you could end up at especially if you didn't know the area and like I passed a road just a minute ago that is not a legal road to drive down but it looks like a wide open road so if you didn't in the, in the National Forest, there's a motor vehicle use map that the National Forest puts out, and that dictates what roads you can and cannot drive. There's also sometimes county roads and things like that as well in those areas that may not be on that map. But for the most part, that dictates the legal Forest Service roads you can drive. But a lot of times there's Forest Service roads that are still great condition, and you don't know they're closed unless you're looking at that particular map. So... It would be very easy for Joshua to have driven, turned down a road that most other people don't drive that maybe are local to the area because they know it's closed and they could get fined for driving down that road. That makes it really tricky because I'm, I'm passing roads. Sometimes I'm thinking uh, you, you could drive a car down that. No problem. There might be a camp spot back there. Uh, you don't know what's down there, but I can't just drive down that road without permission from the Forest Service. So, um I'm going to try to mark some of those and keep them in the back of my head in case I get the opportunity to later. But for now, I'm just going to check all these type areas and the roads I can drive. And I'm watching like off the sides of the roads where there's steep ravines and stuff. If there was an accident, you know, brakes went out, lost control or whatever, and you went down, slid down in one of those ravines, it could be very hard to spot, especially now that the trees are green and things like that. So keep going, see what we can find. Somebody spent some time here, made himself some benches, some little rock walls here, a little bridge across the creek. Someone, you know, someone spent a lot of time right here. This isn't uncommon out here. There's lots of spots like this. All right, just met up with Tim and Luke. We're here in Norman, Arkansas, a little bitty town out here in this area. We've got a game plan together, so we're gonna go head on down a little further into the Washita's, split up, cover some different roads, and, and keep on searching and see what we can find and track all our routes. So we're gonna get back on the road. All right, we're back on dirt road. I'm 
sending the guys on a little further. They're going to kind of take a northern section of this area, and I'm going to go kind of further south, and then we're going to meet up down at a lake a little later and kind of compare notes, see where we're at. So we've got a spot to meet up in case anything goes wrong, anybody gets stuck or something like that. So we'll know where we're supposed to be at some point. I have no idea how long some of this is going to take. I've got a lot of area I want to cover, but I don't know how long it's going to take to cover it. I'm trying to cover all the little dead end roads and side trails, anything that looks like a spot where you might go off and try to go camp or park the hike or anything like that. And then looking off of these steep ditches and stuff on some of these hills. talking about is while we want to find Joshua and we hope that he does get found um, we're also hoping that he's found well <laughs> and in good health um, that's kind of why you know we're hoping we don't find him out in the middle of the forest we hope he gets found at you know a gas station or out driving around that way his family can have him back um, but we are out here trying to trying to help just trying to bring closure but so far there's nothing there's not even like a trace of anybody being out here so we're gonna keep looking hopefully he gets found soon praying for his family every day we'll update y'all soon Well, still slowly making progress, crossing off roads, stopping at, I'm not really stopping at most camp spots, spots I just drive through, see if anything's there. This one looked pretty, so I thought I'd stop. You know, in the podcast about Joshua, it said he loved uh, spending time at the creek and stuff in the area where he grew up, and this is that kind of, I don't know how it compares to that area, but this is the kind of spot that you want to just sit and relax and clear your head for as long as you can because these spots are beautiful this is the kind of spot i would want to come camp at if i was wanting to clear my head a little bit so continuing to work through here it feels very slow i think i've done about 50 miles of dirt so far and i've crossed off a lot of little dead end roads that maybe no one else has been down you know and a lot of those have a camp spot right at the end of them but they're not real popular like this is a more popular spot so it's more likely that someone would have seen them or seen something at some point but gonna keep on looking keep on going well this portion of the road's closed so i gotta turn back and go down one of the other roads hopefully i don't know how long this one's been closed but hopefully that means there's been traffic up in here it looks like maybe they're doing road work maybe there's a landslide or something so probably been a lot of people up here in here working on stuff but it looks like there's been heavy equipment don't know but i'm going to reroute and go check out another little area up 
with Tim and Luke again at our meeting spot after kind of doing our first round and we kind of compared notes and neither one of us have found anything which is not surprising I mean this is a needle in a haystack kind of deal but we definitely agreed that there's a ton of places out here where there could be an accident you could slide off of a gravel road and it's just very difficult to cover those types of places and with all the green trees and everything you can't see anything now a lot of them maybe they would have been spotted back in January February wouldn't have any leaves on the trees but some of those areas are really hard to cover so Anyway, we're just gonna keep we're just gonna keep going. Um, they're headed back via kind of a northern direction from here towards Mina, and then they'll be headed home from there. All they've got is one day. I'm gonna head. I've got two more dead end roads here nearby that I know one of them has camp spots on because I've been down it before. I don't know about the other one, so I'm gonna hit both of those, and then I'm gonna head south and kind of redirect around back to where I'm spending the night. So, gonna keep covering, just covering ground. And you know, maybe we find the car at a trailhead or at a camp spot or something. And that car is somewhere. He's somewhere. So it's just a matter of figuring out maybe where that's at. And it could be could be 100 miles from here. But we're just gonna keep doing what we can for right now. It's what we're here to do. So we did run across a guy at the spot we were meeting up that had two punctured tires on his car. He was running a spare, but he had a second flat. So, fortunately, we carry a tire plug kit. Hopefully, he's able to make it back to wherever he's going with uh, his two patch tires. But he's got a spare now, so we got his original two tires patched, and then he's still got a spare. So, hopefully, he'll be all right. It's a bad day when you get two flat tires, but it happens sometimes out here. never expect anybody to drive a Ford Taurus down this road, but I don't think it's impossible. I've kind of had to make some judgment calls on certain roads and be like, no, it's not possible to get that car in here and others like this one that most people probably wouldn't, but if you were lost or turned around or just didn't care for some reason, like I've seen people take cars and minivans in places you would never think they could get to. So trying to do my due diligence and look where I'm at as thoroughly as possible. So in the back of my mind, I don't have anything thinking about that spot and thinking, oh, I should have gone to the end of that road. I'm going to go as far as I think it is physically possible for that car to go. And if there's nothing there, then there's nothing there. We got us a little roadblock. I'm over on another road now, kind of getting back out to normal areas. Got off that one little road. But this big old tree just got blown down, I'm going to say very recently. Kind of interesting. Almost looks like they tried to push it out of the way with a dozer based off of these marks here. I think. Yeah, truck should clear it. Let's hope it doesn't fall while I'm. Uh, down the road because it's going to be a pain to get that out of the way and my chainsaw i don't have a battery for my chainsaw i've got to get a good chainsaw mounted on this truck for situations like this all right guys i'm wrapping it up i'm headed back it'll probably be seven o'clock by the time i get back to the cabin where we're staying so that's it for today. We'll hit it again tomorrow, get a kind of refresh, look back at my map, see what area to hit tomorrow, and hit it again tomorrow. So, who knows? Maybe we'll find something. Well, it's a new day. Heading out again. Didn't get up quite as early this morning, but we're going to head back out into the Washita National Forest and check out some more areas. I kind of went over my maps, what we've covered, what other areas I think we need to try to cover. And so we're going to head out. It's just me and my wife, Sarah, and the kids today. She's rolling behind me in the suburban. The guys had to get back to the shop for some projects we got going on, but we're gonna keep uh, looking around and hopefully we spot something somewhere. 
Alright, we're back on some dirt roads. We're going to check out some dead end roads and see if there's camp spots on them and if there's anything there and then kind of keep an eye off the sides of the roads just like we were doing yesterday. Well, this has been another one of those roads that's highly highly unlikely but you could drive down but we're gonna turn around we went all the way to the end of it nothing here so turn around head back out and keep on rolling all right we made it back in down to albert pike recreation area down in here and it's lunchtime, so we're gonna stop feed the crew and then we're gonna head back east out of here we kind of explored west of here yesterday so we're gonna head back east there's still a couple roads that i haven't checked out so i know a lot of this area has been gone over by family and things like that but i wanted to do it myself track all of our routes and hit some of the roads that maybe nobody else would drive a lot of the dead end roads that have camp spots at the end and things like that so that's kind of what we've been doing we're gonna eat some lunch and then get back after it all right, we're heading out from here and then we got two roads we're gonna take back. So we're gonna split up, run two different roads that come back together later. So we'll be able to cover two more of the roads that go out of here. And then after that, I gotta figure out where we're going, so. Get back to it.
we've wrapped up this particular area. We met back up and now we're gonna head out of this area and try to go to another spot. It's kind of hard at this point because based off the information we have, we have no idea what direction Joshua would have been going or where he was headed next. So it's hard to pick an area to search, but I think I'm gonna head further east closer to Lake Washita because if I was in the area and I was looking for something else interesting, I might head to Lake Washita because it's a big lake and it looks cool. So um, I think we're gonna head that direction and just kind of finish out our day running some roads over there and, and uh, see what we find. finished up another stretch we're back to pavement so I think we're gonna have to call it a day and head on back to base and regroup and figure out where we're gonna go tomorrow well guys I'm really not sure how to wrap this video up because it in certain ways it feels like we've just failed but I know in my mind there's a lot of places that I knew were possibilities that are now eliminated so I feel like we've made some progress and that uh, there is still hope. Uh, you know, we're just, we've covered a very small area. Joshua's out there somewhere, his car's out there somewhere. And so what we need is we need for you guys to keep an eye out. Everybody that sees this, share this video, go follow the Facebook page, Help Find Joshua Kasky. Um, they've got a GoFundMe now that they're trying to raise money to get a private investigator to help them uh, because law enforcement has, it's limited to what law enforcement can do because there's no foul play suspected so there's lots of ways to help support get the word out keep an eye out in your area like we said Joshua may not be in this area at all anymore he could be three states over uh, he could literally be pretty much anywhere so uh, share the information um, and keep an eye out because he's out there somewhere so uh, just do what you can if the more people that see this the better uh, that's a big part of why i reached out to the family I was like how can i help would a video like this help hopefully it does hopefully it raises some awareness that's the the biggest thing that i can do right now is just to help raise awareness that he's out there somewhere and to keep an eye out and i'll put all the information that i have in the links in the description below so that you can go find out more from the vanish podcast from the facebook page maybe you've seen him maybe you saw him a couple months ago or his car and it stuck in the back of your mind but you didn't know what was going on um so like i said before the last place he was definitely seen was in mina and then likely seen at the eagle rock um trail so i mean anywhere in this area it's very possible that someone saw him over the last few months you know from glenwood to royal Mount Ida, Caddo Gap, Mina, Hot Springs, Jesseville, Story. There's so many little communities around here and maybe someone's seen him at you know a Dollar General or a gas station and maybe we can put together a, a more accurate trail of where he's gone based off of some of that information if we can actually verify some of those sources. It's, it's so hard to know where to even look because he could have gone any direction from where he was last seen. So that, that makes it very, very difficult to get in, you know, some of these uh, organizations that help find missing persons is because there's so little information on where to even begin. So uh, we're gonna be here for another day. Um, me and my wife and the kids, we're gonna do some more exploring this area, some places we haven't been that we wanna check out. And, and we're gonna try to hit some new places and, and continue to keep an eye out. So we're not done, but we're done with this video. So um, we've, we've kind of done what we can for the time being, but we're gonna keep keeping an eye out and you should as well. So thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. Um, 
it means a lot and it means a lot to the family and you know we're all just doing what we can so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time